Greetings, YouTube. As I've mentioned in the past and actually shown people, I have a fascination with LED flashlights, light emitting diodes. Um, I first discovered them over, I guess, 10 years ago, it's been maybe almost 15, and I've been collecting LED flashlights since then. And I have replaced, I think, every incandescent flashlight I've got. I think I may have a couple of incandescent lanterns left, but you know, I, I, the rest are all LEDs now. And today's video isn't about a specific flashlight, it's more on talking about some of the designs I've noticed over the years, and the fact that so far, I haven't really encountered my perfect flashlight. So some of the flashlights I've collected have been kind of novelty items. And this one for here, for example, got a big button in here, on, off. This can turn so you can, you can actually make the beam do this. And what I happen to really like about this particular design is it's got a clip. You can clip it onto your clothing, all right? And I can direct this. So this, in my opinion, is the best reading light I've ever encountered because most reading lights attach to the book itself. And if and if it doesn't quite in the right position, you have to keep fiddling with it. Whereas if this is attached to my body, I can move the book slightly and get it to the light to be exactly where I want it to be. And I have got bought a couple of these cheap at um, Radio Shack and I happen to really like them. Um, this is another novelty flashlight, <coughs> which actually oddly um, hang off of your ear. Yeah, it's dumb. I bought it purely for its novelty factor. But it's got three light modes. Um, high, medium, and blinking. And quite frankly, I don't know why I would want a blinking light on my ear. Um, and you'll see that in the number of these different things. This is a keychain flashlight. It's got little gems on it. I bought it purely because it's blingy. As a keychain flashlight, it only functions when you push the button, which is good because you don't want a keychain flashlight that'll come on permanently. You don't want to throw it in a purse, get it clicked on, and it drains the battery. Disadvantage, you could still throw it in your purse and enough weight hits it, it could still go on and stay on. But if it's in a loose pocket or something, you're not going to have to worry about that. And on, and you don't even need it temporarily, you know, find a keyhole, things like that. So that's a good feature in uh, a keychain light. However, my preference for a keychain light, and this is my actual keychain, and you can see this is very, very worn. That turned started out all black when I originally got it. This is an arc light, a company that doesn't exist anymore, but the patent has been bought up by someone I don't remember who, but they still exist as far as an item goes. Single LED. You have to turn it, but it's a nice bright light. It's got some decent flood, not much a throw. It doesn't go very far, but it doesn't need to. It's just, again, to find simple things in a car or something. But because I have to turn it, it never goes on in my pocket. And I've carried this thing for years. I have beaten this thing, and it still functions. Um, good for a keychain light. Then we have a design, a very thin, slim design. This is from Coast, and uh, rebranded for Eddie Bauer, but it's a Coast light. And it's got a temporary button here. And that's a really nice feature, in my opinion. The disadvantage is that this dome structure here, the way it's built, is such that I can't actually click it all the way on comfortably. It's difficult for me to do it. It works better if I do the smaller finger and able to go directly in. Slight discrepancy. Another disadvantage of that design, you can't candle it. A lot of flashlights, you can put them on their end to bounce light off of a ceiling to illuminate a more a larger area in the event that you have a power outage. Now this particular flashlight has an odd feature. You can turn it into a wand to illuminate a room, act as a signaling device. It's a little strange. I can't imagine actually ever needing to carry this and it still has some direct light abilities. Um, but again, I bought it as a novelty item. I bought it on sale. I think I paid six bucks for it. So I didn't mind. But it comes together in a pouch and you can carry two, two items like that. As I did recently, I think this is a great design for a family or with, especially with ones with children. It's got crank power, um, solar flash, a solar panel built into it. 
Okay. Um, the good ergonomics as far as holding it, because it's got a nice curve to it, so it's comfortable in the hand. The button goes on and off without difficulty. It's tough enough to do that it's not gonna go on on its own. It is a little bulky, but it's got the you know the dynamo and the, and the solar panel looked into it. Uh, but as for a kid, this is, in my opinion, one of the ideal uh, designs I think you could have. I have a couple of lanterns. This lantern is uh, lantern flashlight mode. So this is a purely I paid five bucks for it. Um, I wanted to see how well it lit, and it's okay. It's a good thing for something for a kid for camping. Nothing serious for anybody else. This, however, is a serious lantern light. Um, it's, uh, it has hooks up here to hang it. It's got on, off, but you also can go, and the light will go down to a low setting, and then off again. So you can really just illuminate what you want inside your tent. And it's folding small, and it is an excellent, high quality design. And uh, I bought that on sale. Now there are other things here that I, I, I find intriguing. Now this one, in fact, I just got this last night. Uh, my father bought me a four pack. Knowing my father, he paid probably about four dollars for the whole thing, which is fine. On, off. The button is rough, it goes in hard, it's got a battery carrier, which is a design I don't like because it's just more things to, you can possibly break. It's got nine LEDs, not much throw, lots of flood. I wouldn't necessarily want to keep this as my only flashlight, but it's a nice novelty item. It's interesting because it's triangular, it has an interesting hand feel. A little bulky, but it's interesting because you know your hand really kind of has that shape in many ways. You can candle it, which is good. It's got a lanyard, but I, I don't know if the lanyard would be all that useful, quite frankly. But I mean, as a novelty item, it's kind of cool. I got three more of these that came in a far four pack. Um, this right here was designed as a child's flashlight. It's a large, bulky thing, fills the hand well. It's got a side button, and what's cool about this is it goes yellow green, red. I can't really see the red, but it is red. And, um, which is fun for a kid to play with. I bought it again because it was a novelty item. Um, this one here I've talked about in the past. I also got this at Radio Shack. What I like about this, it's controlled by electrical conductivity. You got two bars here. You only touch one, nothing happens. Touch two, light comes on. Okay, Which I think would be awesome for a person with mobility issues. This is, again, not something I want to carry. It's no weatherproofing. It's not really that rugged. But not a nightstand for an elderly person or someone with some mobility issues. And all they need to do to reach out and do this, this is an awesome design. I don't know why I have not seen this design earlier. The technology is not complex. Um, this design right here, single LED, side button. I don't like side buttons anymore. At one time, I didn't mind them, but I've come to really find them annoying in many ways. Though they're not, they're, they're having them here is very familiar for people. I've come to really appreciate having a flashlight button here. Now, a couple of things about this is that I do like, you can candle it. It's got a weird feature in here. See that little post? You can't really see, but there's a hole in the post. So in theory, you could thread a lanyard in here. I don't know how you thread a lanyard in that. That's a really bad design. Frankly, I can't figure out why they thought that was a good design. But you can't candle it. It's an overall very attractive design. I bought it specifically because of its shape. Um, I found the ergonomics to be, it rolls like a son of a gun when you put it aside, which is not good because of different diameters. It naturally rolls like this when you put it down. Not good if you're gonna use a flashlight. But as a higher end flashlight, or one that you wanna blend into a, a setting that it's not gonna be obvious, this is a good design option. Um, here is a, an Innova, I can't remember what brand this is. On and off, note, it, the temporary, you can't really do temporary easily. You can just barely do a temporary, but it's hard. You have to kind of fiddle with it. It's, on and off works pretty well. It's got an octagonal design here, square here, so it's not going to roll very good. It's got these vents here because this thing actually puts enough power out that it actually can heat up too much. Um, again, I bought it on sale. I like the novelty. This is the one I keep next to myself on the living room, uh, in my living room. This right here is also an Innova design. I have it on a lanyard because uh, I stay. This is the flashlight that I carry every single day of my life. I don't ever leave the home without it. It's got five bulbs. You turn it oddly in the open position. You go 
as you as though you're taking it off and turn it on. Okay, one of the best designs as far as diameter, length, but no butt cap bulb. The new designs on this do have a butt cap bulb, a, a button, button rather. This is the first generation. I've had this for a long time, but this is one of the best flashlights I have ever owned, and I'm hesitant to replace it because it, it, it is such a great piece of um, technology, and I've been so fond of it for so long. That, like I said, the Nova does make a temporary button design. This is a, and you can also screw it all the way on to have it stick on, and you can like this. This is a single LED on this one with a magnification in there. Um, I bought that just because I didn't have one. Um, this is a design for Ever Ready. That's why it's got the Ever Ready design uh, coloration. And the button is in so deep that I cannot comfortably do this at all. That, not a problem. Not so good. It's got a tunable light, kind of like a mag light. Not that useful, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Overall nice is the diameter, it's a little bulky, but you can't candle it. Okay, so you're noticing certain things that I happen to like about these flashlights. This is the classic 2AA battery LED, which I have done a conversion. It is now has three LED bulbs inside instead of an incandescent bulb, and I have put a temporary cap on the end. Now, at the moment, the cap doesn't work. Turn it, whoops, I turn it slightly. Oh, wrong way, sorry. Uh, now it's not going to work for me. Are you, you pain in my buns? Shoot. Ah, better must be dead. Yeah, it happens sometimes. But it's got a temporary butt cap on it, which is nice. But again, I think it's a little long. This is a uh, coast version of the same flashlight, three LED bulbs, temporary, very nice temporary bulb, uh, temporary button, works really well. But again, because of the shape, I have a hard time pushing it with one finger to go all the way in. That works. This doesn't. My thumb actually cannot get the button to go in. I can't candle it. Um, and again, problematic on, on, on the design. This right here I bought for LEDs purely for the design and the weight. It's aluminum, it's got a nice feel to it, and uh, it made me smile because it kind of looks like a sex toy. On, off, that's it, on, off. Can't candle it. Um, I would not want to carry this because it's a very bulky design, but aesthetically, it's quite attractive. Um, this is one my friend's car at Skull gave me. It's a bulky flashlight, but take the lanyard off and you can candle it, nice design got multiple LEDs. This has a nice flood. It's got a, a blue, um, white, I think that's black light, and then a laser. I happen to keep this one handy because the laser is very popular with my cats. And because it's, it's an on-off laser, I don't have to hold the button in place. Um, here's another Coast design, an earlier version of this design. Okay. Now, this is actually a Coast knockoff, and this is an official knockoff in the sense that these people bought the same bodies that Coast uses. I've got another one of these that is the official Coast flashlight. It is the same body. So they bought a lot of them, or they convinced them to make them some on the side, and it's got an on and off, and this button on this knockoff sucks so bad, I'm not going to try to turn it on because getting it to go back off again is a nightmare. Uh, but this particular one is a uh, black light design, kind of thing that a bouncer would use to check, you know, um, stamps on people's hands, things like that. Uh, this one I picked up cheap. This is a Serengeti. I got in a set. You can put right in the, in the U.S. You can pick up two of these for like 12 or 13 bucks. It's got some nice features. This is the one I keep in, in my kitchen most of the time, just in case I need a quick flashlight. So, I am a low, high, blinky. Why you would need a strobe light, I don't know. Features I like, butt cap, I can table, I, I can table it. Um, it's a little bulky, a little too big. This is very much too big. 
Length is okay as far as I'm concerned. These crenellations here, frankly, I think it's been designed as a self-defense tool, which I think is kind of absurd, but that's just me. So we're coming down this couple of here design features that I happen to really like. Now I bought this particular flashlight a couple of years ago. Um, it's River Rock, which is uh, kind of a no-name brand. And it was uh, I got it cheap, it was on sale. Now, on off. Now the on and off is a little difficult in this mode. It works better in this mode, or if you hold it like this, which is another popular way of holding a flashlight. I like the diameter. Um, I'm discovering about three quarters of an inch is a good diameter for my hand. It's a little short, I think, for what I, what I daily carry. I want a little longer so that I can put it into my pouch successfully. This is almost too short, which is why I put a lanyard on it. Getting in and out of the, in and out of the pouch makes this, this lanyard makes it a whole lot easier when I carry on my belt. Um, this is a clip, those you can put in your pocket. It's got some decent throw and, different, and decent flooding. Overall, a decent design. Uh, it's not quite as rugged as I would like it to be, which is where we come to this EverReady design. Now, this EverReady design is quite interesting because, or sorry, yeah, Energizer. Energizer is interesting. I find because first of all, it has the instructions on it, but the batteries in it printed right in the flashlight, something I've never seen before, and I really appreciated. Clip, a good diameter, maybe just the smidge too big with the, these knurlings. The knurlings are a little aggressive, and like it's got these little like ex enlarged sections for something right here that you don't need, it's kind of extraneous. If this were just a little bit closer to this size, I'd be happier. Now, what I really like about this is the temporary button is awesomely sensitive. I just go boom, 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 and then I go all the way in and I got light. So temp, for like I just gotta look at something for a moment, done, done. Single bulb, it's a little more robust than the one I just showed you before it. Um, now Fenix makes it, uh, Fenix, F-E-N-I-X, makes one which is close to this design and a little longer. One I may be looking at in the future because I'd like to get one that has this, things like a, a, a butt cap that I can use effectively that's a little bit longer so it'll fit my pouch more comfortably. And then what I don't like about this, it's so sensitive. If you toss this into a pocket or a purse, this is gonna bump up against something and go off and your battery's gonna drain on you. Okay, like the other one I just showed you, the battery's drained, sometimes that happens, okay? But having a butt cap that protects the button reduces that possibility. And I can't handle it because the button sits proud of, again, really nice because of that sensitive but if you do the crenellation like this, like this one has, I'm sorry, a crenellation like that, I can still get my finger in there while the button's protected, and it lets me have a tabling option, a candling option, like this. So that butt design, closer to this, the in this, or just a smidge smaller, maybe a little longer would be to me the ideal flashlight design. I want one mode. If I'm carrying a daily flashlight, I want one mode, on, off, temp, or full on and off. Multiple modes are cool, but on a, for me, for a daily flashlight, they are not something I want every time. Now, for the ultimate in impracticality, I'm going to show you this <clears throat> is a 6D cell mag light. This thing is heavy, really heavy. It's an aluminum design, body design, aluminum from tip to tip. I have converted this particular model um, to LED. There we go. So it's got a slightly bluer light, much more efficient. This thing would run for a couple of weeks if I needed it to run, okay, which is one of the reasons I keep it that. It's a, it's a novelty item. I've got a big metal club that functions as a flashlight, because that's what this is, folks. It's a big metal club that functions as a flashlight. Literally, you'd have to use it, do it like this to use it effectively. It is so heavy. You'd have to rest it on your shoulder and point it like a spotlight. So those are some of my thoughts on flashlight designs and how some are done purely as novelty, some are complete failures in their desire to, to, uh, to uh, succeed at their task. Um, and I'm hoping that someday I can actually have a design 
that will meet all of my personal requirements. And you know something? This particular flashlight is really, really failing. 